I'm Michael Clayton, and I'm going back to school with Stephen Clayton. I'm curious, what kind of a student were you growing up? More hands-on uh, student. Uh, sort of, uh, I, I managed to, I, I went to a Catholic primary school, and I was always very handy, and I managed to uh, get out of homework because I could flap plastic uh, uh, bags and, and stuff that, that the monks would sell at the school cakes. So I was, uh, I was quite industrious in, in getting out of homework. Were these in actual like workshop classes or textiles classes? No, or? no, there was no such thing then. Right. There was no such thing. How's the serenity? Not a sound. Uh, and uh, being a Catholic school, there was always a lot of singing, uh, choirs, concerts, all that sort of thing. And then I went to, uh, this was in Brisbane, I went to a GBS school, uh, where all of that was sort of a bit sissy. And uh, in about year 10, I had a bit of an accident uh, at school, having a raffle with a friend of mine where I busted a high-pressure tap that came off in the hand and flooded the school. And they decided that my return to school was provisional. And then the family decided, well, we'd better send him to boarding school. And uh, so they sent me to Gympie Christian Brothers, which was a little bit like um, Hogan's Heroes, being a, uh, an institution run by the inmates. Uh, it was a great school and, and, and a lot of larrikin behavior, but it also... Uh, we did elaborate concerts, and there was a brother there, uh, Brother Locke, who I owe a great debt to, and we did sort of balls and things like that in the primary school. I always seemed to get that role out front, doing something apart from the others. And uh, he, we, we did elaborate concerts and did like mind something or the college trio. Um, uh, we'd, we'd do folk songs and things like that, and uh, uh, I just sort of got the taste. And um, I wasn't uh, an incredible sportsman. I wasn't an incredible academic. The compliment that I, that, that I got uh, that really summed me up most was uh, one of the brothers at the GPS school said, you're very cunning, Mr. Clayton. <laughs> uh, for always having such a plausible reason for not having done my homework. And I took that as a compliment. But yeah. Were there certain <laughs> were there subjects that you just weren't into? Did you feel like, well, my talents lie elsewhere, so well, why well, am I listen, wasting my I time? I was really good at maths and geometry and things like that. But once maths got abstract and science got abstract, I was gone. I could, I the, the whole abstraction, cosine theta, oof, I was gone. Right. No, that wasn't me at all. And my son, who's excellent at maths, his mother and I sort of believe that we took the wrong baby home from the hospital. Sure. Yeah. Well, at least now someone in the family is good at maths. Exactly. I mean, I could add up. Is that all right? But it's like, you can, uh, you can <laughs> as soon as you could add up, you were behind the class. Uh, I live in Broken Hill. But uh, I'm dying. Well, going back just to the the school where acting or being part of musical performances was kind of frowned upon, or sissy as you described it, was it difficult in that period? I don't, I'm not sure how long you were at that particular school, but was it difficult having this, this passion for something, or at least knowing you liked this one type of thing and not being able to express it? Oh, no, no. Look, it was uh, all the development in, in that particular school. Um, while I was at that particular school, happened uh, outside of the school. The era of Elvis and rock and roll, and, and so um, that's what we got into. I mean, I remember at one stage, you know, there was a film they made years ago called Smiley, Smiley, and I, I remember saying to my mum, I wouldn't mind auditioning for that or going along because they, it was a big deal, and they, you know, they were advertising, and I, my mum wouldn't hear about it. <laughs> going, 
but I'd always be at the movies and, and I'd, I'd look at them and think, I think I could do that. You know, sort of the stuff. But uh, I never had any real training until I left school. So, but I got the taste. I got the taste from being on stage and performing from that country board experience in Brisbane. Eventually you became a parent, as you mentioned, that your mm -hmm. own son is, uh, is skilled at maths. Um, what did you notice, I guess, as a parent with a, a child going through schooling years? Had you noticed a difference in the way that education was kind of being rolled out? Anything you were concerned oh. about? Anything you wish you had had oh when you were God, going through? Yes, yes. They have got, they, he went to a great school. Uh, he, he's, my son's been through NIDA. I mean, he's a, he's a nice actor. He's a, a lovely musician, singer and songwriter. And, um, but his school years were um, so much richer than mine. He, he went to a, a good high school in Sydney that had a, a great uh, drama department. At 14, he started to go to the Australian Theatre for Young People, which I sort of didn't approve of initially, but it basically kept him out of trouble all through his teenage years. Why was it that you didn't approve of it at the time? Oh, I thought there'd be plenty of time for that. But in actual fact, it, it was a great idea. And he, w he did such great uh, plays. He did uh, The Woodshop of Horrors at school. And I thought, who's going? Who's <laughs> going? Who's going down that road? Who do you play in Little Shop? The dentist. That's a good one. Yes, That's indeed. It's <laughs> hard to turn back once you play the dentist. And then uh, coming out for the uh, curtain call to sit around. <laughs> and I thought, there you go. He's gone. <laughs> Well, is that is that a chip off the old block? Is that what you were like at that age as well? Or? Oh God, no! I had no idea they would be acting professionally. I just did it because I loved it. I had no idea that I'd ever someone would pay me to do it. And then when someone did start to pay me to do it, I thought this is amazing. They're paying me to do something I really love doing. Dad, four fifty. But jousting sticks, tell him he's dreaming. And just finally, do you have one piece of advice? Mm -hmm. You know, with everything you've gone through. And one piece of advice you give to students about the way they deal with their education. Try to realise what your, your talents are, what you're good at, and, and aim your education that way, and, and be brave and have a go. Because uh, uh, life's a funny thing, it has something that you might end up doing uh, on leaving school, mightn't be the job that you end up with. Uh, because along the way and with life experience, you learn other things. So I'd say be adaptable, uh, don't be on railway lines, and take the advantages when they're there. And if you've got a hobby, something you really love doing, well, go with it. And who knows what that hobby could turn into. Beautiful. Michael, thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure, Nick. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed that video, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find more of our stuff at studentedge.com.au.